So, then, uh, so this is a question to pretty much everybody. So when you observe the, the behavior of a system, either from the real world data, like a pattern for games, or from the theoretical models, uh, you know, this is kind of a classic question, but I'm going to ask it anyway. How do you decide whether or not this is an open ended system? You know, it, uh, we take games and real world as the, the, you know, the hallmark of open endedness, but uh, do we have now the theoretical background that can, we can say that that's truly open ended? Uh, okay, you start. Okay, everybody wants. Um, so yeah, that's really hard because um, I, I struggle with that a lot, like submitting to this conference, and you know how am I going to measure open endedness? But um, like after having several conversations with people in the audience, I realized that you know it it's it maybe we're getting too caught up in finding a measure to describe open endedness, and we can just say that all right. If you have a state space that's constantly changing and you see these particular things, then you just assume that it's open-ended and then go from there. Yeah. At least that's what I learned. Um, so I have um, some thoughts about a really practical thing that we ought to be focusing on. I, I think that the um, activity statistic metrics are, are extremely important to keep, and I think indefinite scalability is important. But the, perhaps to gain greater confidence, um, so this is really about not, not the things that are driven by the natural world. Uh, but by closed systems, where all everything is inside a system. Um, I think we should really try and focus on seeing a se long sequence of behaviors. And that would give us a lot. If we found a system in which we could um, have evolution produce a long sequence of goal evolved behaviors, that would give us a lot more confidence in um, that these metrics are actually telling us what we hope they're telling us. Um, and the moment I, I've looked quite hard, and I, I've not found any example of that from a closed system that isn't being fed by human activity or by biological activity. Um, I uh, talking about indefinite scalability, which is certainly different than open-ended evolution, but they have some significant overlap. Uh, one of the points that I wanted to thought about making was that there's kind of two ways to think about indefinite scalability. There's sort of a scientific stance and an engineering stance. And in the scientific stance, you're trying to find metrics. You're trying to find something that's going to give you signs or statistics that feel good. I am actually more concerned with the engineering stance where you sort of basically look at your model and, and you do sort of a, a scalability audit. And, and you say, what is going to be the bottleneck if I try to build this up? What is change as I scale it up? Like, for example, Takashi's case with the Boyds, where the behavior changed significantly as you scaled it up. And for me, I'm totally happy to say, if I have my scalability audit, everything feels good. Uh, we can keep going there until we run out of money, heat death the universe, we're good. Uh, uh, then open endedness will take care of itself. Um, I guess I uh, uh, feel like um, we ha now have concrete examples of of open-endedness uh, in various kinds of models. Um, how we see that, I think, is, is uh, um, still an interesting problem. And as you can tell, these activity statistics are still close to my heart. And, and so I love seeing Alistair's work uh, um, computing them out for eons um, um, and getting evidence of, of a certain kind a certain kind of evidence for open-endedness. Um, uh, I'm not so worried about the original limitation that I saw with those statistics, namely being um, uh, that the space of possibilities that they were counting were closed. Because there are various ways you can just let the space of possibilities open up and, and, um, uh, and keep on gathering statistics. And I think that with, with uh, your GEB model, that, that's the kind of thing we're seeing. Um, uh, on the other hand, I think there's still something missing, uh, which is hard to get a handle on. And that's uh, something that that's, uh, I alluded to with the, the technology case, that because it it's just hits you in the face immediately. And that is uh, functionality. Basically. Um, I think real open-endedness um, is a situation uh, is something where uh, you not only have new stuff happening, but um, the new stuff is doing new things. 
and interacting uh, in new ways. And that's why I was asking Alistair about interaction and, and whether or not there might be some way to get a handle on interactions um, in the model and not just how many, not just diversity, basically. I think diversity and open-endedness based on diversity style statistics can't really capture the whole story because it doesn't have this functionality. And, and, and that's uh, one of the things that um, um, embodiment gives us in, 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 uh, uh, in various contexts is, is, is a concrete notion of functionality. Um, and, and somehow I don't think we've got a real handle yet on how to measure that and how to see it when it's happening and, and how to uh, be convinced that it's uh, uh, happening in an ongoing way. There's pl plenty of models um, uh, where um, uh, you can demonstrate there's open-endedness, but basically the interaction between the components, uh, you know, a million generations down the pipe is pretty much the same old, same old kind of thing that's going on after a thousand generations. And that's not quite as interesting as something like the uh, formation of a eukaryotic cell. And, and so, so there's some, I, I think that's uh, one of the key questions for me is this identification of functionality. Okay, I think, uh, well, we'll leave it here, uh, there for now. There's a coffee break now. Um, and to remind you again, there's the, another chance to um, look at the posters and presentations. Please join us again, half past five. Just two more talks, um, so please stay awake. There's the um, Hiroki's second talk, and then Steam's talk, and then a final wrap-up discussion, so more chance for questions then. So please just join me in thanking this session's speakers again. Wow.